You're watching Barnesable this morning. Joining me now is Mick Carlin, author and teacher. Thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Thanks for inviting me, Sarah. You know, you do a lot. You've been a teacher for how long at Barnesable High School? I just finished my 31st year. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. You really have a passion for teaching and working with students. Tell me a little bit about what made you want to be a teacher and what you like most about the profession. Hmm. I went to Keene State College where I met Mike Gyra. Gyra and I have known each other since 1979. And I wanted to be a teacher back then, but my advisor said, um, there's a glut on the market, you won't be able to find a job, you're a good writer, go into publishing. So you know, you're 20 years old, you listen. And I was an assistant editor for two years at Little Brown Publishers in Boston. Loved living in the city, found the work deadly dull. So I talked to my parents and they said, well, do what you really want to do. Go back and get a degree and teach. So I got a degree um, in education from UMass Lowell. And the day after I got my degree, I was hired down here. Wow. So it shows you sometimes you don't have to listen to the people telling you to go in a direction you don't want to go. Listen to your heart. And that may be a message you provide to your students, I think. It not only in your teaching, but also by example, you've also written s s three novels now. Yeah, my third one, Girl Singer, comes out in early November. Yeah, really exciting. How, when, did you start the, when did you start writing? I've been writing since I was a kid. I had a seventh grade English teacher who said to me, you're a very good writer. Um, I wrote a lot of journalism over the years for various magazines and newspapers. I would try short stories and novels, but I would just run out of ideas. You know, four chapters in, where does it go from here? And then five years later, you're still four chapters in. And then it dawned on me one day, I mean, I'm kind of like Rain Man when it comes to some of these jazz figures. My wife asked me to remember to bring home a gallon of milk and I forget, but I can tell you, you know, what Duke Ellington was doing on December 3rd, 1927. It's a little weird. So I suddenly had an epiphany. Put together your knowledge of these jazz figures with your ability to write and maybe something good will come from it because jazz is a music that a lot of young people aren't listening to, but that's the whole point of my books, to make young people realize that this music is a gift that can spiritually nourish you for the rest of your lives. And so you do introduce your students to jazz mm -hmm. oftentimes uh, in your teaching. Talk to me about what they get out of hearing this music for the first time, maybe, or, well, or introducing them to a new type of music that they may not be listening to. Well, young kids, by and large, do have open minds. Um, but for the past 20 years, they've been listening to a music that is driven by the bass and the human voice talking, rap music. So the first time you play it to them, whether it's Louis Armstrong or Billie Holiday or Duke or anyone, they find it a little bizarre, but all you have to do is play it a second time or a third time, and then they begin to really enjoy it. And then they ask you, what can I download? You know, in the old days, they'd ask, what CDs do you uh, recommend I buy? But now it's, you know, what should I download? But on a typical Friday, we always have a vocab quiz. So I'll start off, say I, I'll play um, The West End Blues by Louis Armstrong. I'll tell them the date it was recorded. I'll tell them what to listen for. I tell them to close their eyes, and they listen. Not that much time goes by. It's like a three minute and 28 second recording. So they listen to it. Then I pass out the vocab quiz. And while the vocab quiz, while they're taking it, then they listen to the piece again, maybe a couple times after that. And then it begins to break the ice. And then they begin to understand how wonderful this music is. So, so cool. And not only are you introducing them to the music, but then you're sort of bringing it to life with your novels. You've written Riding on Duke's Train as mm -hmm. well as Travels with Louis. Talk to me about those first two novels and how you, the reaction has been from students. Well, getting them published was um, a big deal because you try and you try and you get letters of recommendation. I'm sorry, letters of, um, you know, down with you saying, um, you know, great story, interesting story, but kids aren't interested in jazz. And, you know, I'd, I'd get so frustrated. I, I felt like telling these editors, but that's the whole point of the book. <laughs> but then I, would, I found a publisher, Leapfrog Press, out of New York, and they believed in it. And, you know, let's be honest, the books are not selling in the millions, but they are selling in the thousands. And right now, Duke's Train is in 38 different American schools. 
Um, travels with Louis at last count is in 32 American schools. They've been adopted by the school systems. Um, one school in Seville, Spain, too, Go Figure, has adopted both books. So I do get letters from kids quite often, and they all start off saying different things. You know, I love this, I do that, I'm interested in this. But then towards the end, they all say the same thing. Since reading your book, I'm now listening to Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong jazz. And, you know, that's music to my ears because that's the whole reason I began writing the novels. Wow. And then your third book is coming out in November. Yeah. It's called Girls Singer. Talk mm -hmm. to me about the inspiration for this third novel. This is a little bit more grown up. Yeah. This is maybe for uh, an adult audience or uh, more, you know, older kids. Yeah. The publisher said, um, <clears throat> write one this time that could be used with the upper high school students. Although I just found out yesterday that my riding on Duke's train, it's been used for the past three years at Aurora University in Illinois with a jazz history class. So go figure. That is awesome. But anyways, maybe I aimed a little bit too high because Girl Singer is going to be adopted as um, an adult novel. However, they do think it could be used in 11th and 12th grade classes. But I set out, first off, I wanted a female protagonist. Um, I have a wife and two daughters. I know a little bit about ladies. So I have a female protagonist. She's fictional named Avery Hall. She's a, um, an African-American young lady. And she gets the opportunity to sing in 1938 with the Count Basie Orchestra after Billie Holiday leaves the band. So I'm halfway through the book, and you know, it's jazz on the road, it's this and that. It's, it's very similar to what I've done with my other two, but I wanted to do something different. And honestly, I didn't have any ideas. So the thing with fiction is you can leave it alone and the characters wait for you. I was taking a walk on Craigville Beach about two summers ago, and it hit me. Have her meet a Holocaust survivor. It's 1947 at this point in the book. Holocaust survivors are coming to America. And I was lucky. From 1987 to 1997, I was very good friends with a local Holocaust survivor. His name was Heinz Prager. I met him because he began coming in to speak to my journalism classes at Barnstable High. And really, the day I met Heinz was the day I met a third grandfather. And before he passed away in 97, Heinz left me dozens of his incredible photographs of Germany before the Holocaust. He was in Dachau, but he couldn't bring a camera naturally to Dachau, but he escaped Dachau and he made it to Shanghai, China. Now, I never knew this, but over 20,000 Jewish refugees made it to Shanghai between 1939 and 1945. So I had all this information about Heinz's life, I thought, Make a fictional character based on your friend. So my character's name is Carl Flosch. Naturally, being a Jewish refugee, he's white. My narrator is an African-American woman. They start as friends. They become lovers, and they marry. But of course, being an interracial couple, even in Greenwich Village, you know, a neighborhood that liberal in the late 40s, they could be the victims of violence, and they are. So it takes off from there. So halfway through, it's very similar to my earlier two novels, but from that point to the end, it's quite different. And I was able to put two of my friend's beautiful Shanghai photos in the novel as well. So wonderful because I, I am a huge fan of historical fiction <laughs> and I love being able to, the concept of teaching through fiction yeah. and really getting people engaged and I think that's what you're doing. So congratulations on all of your work. Thank so you very awesome. much. What, do you plan to continue to write and, and keep popping out novels? Well, I've been asked to write a sequel to Riding on Duke's Train. My narrator, Danny, when the book ended, I, I believe he was maybe 13 years old, and it's 1940. Well, a few months after the book ends, you have Billy Strayhorn, the great composer, Ben Webster, um, and several other musicians joining the Duke Ellington Orchestra. So if I do write a sequel, um, I can have those wonderful characters to work with. And Billy Strayhorn, he wrote Take the A-Train, um, an incredible composer in his own right, but he was kind of like Duke's right-hand man. 1939 through the 40s, for the rest of his life, he was an openly gay man. So Billy Strayhorn kind of fought the good fight on two fronts, the color line and the gay straight line. And he was just a very brave, decent, beautiful human being. So if I could capture Billy Strayhorn 
well in a sequel to the book, I will have done a great thing. Oh, well, we will look forward to it. I can't wait to, to read it. And honestly, I'm very excited for a Girl Singer. Can't wait till that comes out in November. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to us about your teaching and your, your writings. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much. Mick Carlin is the author of several novels as well as a teacher at Barnstable High School. For Barnstable This Morning, I'm Sarah Mannell.